Good evening. My name is Amir Coleman. I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present time. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were later incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Chicago Northside branch was established in 2007. At this time, I would like to introduce the school officials. The dean of the Chicago Northside branch is Dr. John Quates. The president is Dr. Patrick Latortu. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with the Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with Lord God. The true name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and that there are God's many. We now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true, correct, and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud 
to symbolize himself because a cloud has doesn't have any particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form. Excuse me. Took on shape and took on form within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen by divine visions and only understood by divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself into a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of the name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And in this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing can escape the pattern. Now, our primary constitutional objectives and aims of the school are as follows. First, is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of the universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua, the Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, cast or color third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man fourth to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures comparative religions psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. 
Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man must or can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. Now tonight's scripture lesson will be Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, which will be read by Dr. If available, Shaquita Mays. But first, we will have a prayer given by Dr. May Cohen. May we have our prayer. Let us bow our hearts and minds. Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are in some really perilous times, and we need to be reminded daily that we can do nothing and we are nothing without you. Please keep our hearts and our minds stayed on you and open up our hearts and minds so that we're able to receive the message that you will impart to us today through the vessels that are presented. All these things we ask in your son's name, God's Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Mays? Hello. Um, good evening, brethren. I will be reading out the Holy Name Bible, um, and that would be Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. Okay. But it came to pass that when Salabala heard that we built the wall, he was wrought and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubble, rubbish, which are burned? Now, Tobiah the Ammonite was, was by him, and he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our Elohim, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out, from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So build we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Salabath and Tob Tob Tobiah and the 
Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashtonites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the beaches began to be stopped, they then they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our Elohim and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see till we come in in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto them, unto us 10 times, from all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places, I even set the people after their families and their swords, their spears and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember Yahweh, which is great and awe-inspiring and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and Elohim had brought their counsel to naught that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields and the bows and the harpoons and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which builded on the wall and they that bear burdens uh, with those that laden everyone with one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other and with the other hand held a weapon for the builders every one and had his sword girded by his side and so build it and he that sounded the trumpet was by me and i said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people the work is great and large and we are separate upon we are separated upon the wall one far from another. In what place therefore ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us. Our Elohim shall fight for us. So we labored in the work and half of them held the spears and from the rising of the morning till the stars appear. Likewise, at the same time said I unto the people, let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem. And in the night, they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor any servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that everyone put them off for washing. That was Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah, brethren. Before we conclude, before we move on uh, with tonight's lecture or class, I would like to make sure that everyone please mute your mics and make sure your video feeds are turned off so that the class may not be disturbed, might not be disturbed. Um, we will have a three speaker format given 33 to 35 minutes. Uh, for each speaker and for the first speaker uh, of this evening it will be a pleasure to call on Dr. Mariah Coleman uh, Dr. Coleman
Good evening, brethren. Hope you can hear me okay. Um, okay, good. Um, it's always an honor and a pleasure to something to say about our Heavenly Father Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. Um, um, recently, Yahweh has had some things on my heart and mind. Um, and um, I, I really hope we all come to the realization of how important this true gospel is and to not be taken away by the wilds of the devil. Because it's so easy, it seems like nowadays. Um, I was just talking to a brother and telling them about how, you know, that the devil puts us sometimes against one another as brethren. Um, someone might go tell somebody else about somebody. And then now that person feels that way about another person when they haven't even talked or met with that person that they've heard things about. And while all of these things are transpiring where this brother is against that brother, you know, it's really the devil who's winning. Um, he's the one who, um, who, who, who gets the last laugh in that situation because, you know, that's not what we're here for. We don't come to class and preach the gospel of Yahshua to turn around and speak badly about our brother and outside of class. And that's really what he's had on my heart and mind. And um, I guess my lecture tonight is going to be more like uh, more like my testimony. Um, I really enjoyed last class on Sunday. I had a dream the night previous to that class and everything they were talking about on the floor is exactly what had happened in my in my dream and I do want to talk about it a little bit I know it's not necessarily going over um, scriptures or anything like that but I just want to give a brief testimony and then I'll be down but but in my uh, dream, the Pope had came to class and we had a special chair in the front of the room and it was decked out in red and in gold. And I told him, I said, you sit here, this seat is for you. And he said, no, I know what that is. And he didn't sit in the seat. So we, I was in the back of the class in the back room. And there were some kids back there, and I couldn't hear class. But the Pope, he sat back there, too. And I was talking to the devil in him. I was antagonizing him. I said, how does it feel to know that you are bound for eternal damnation? I don't know why I did that. And he said some smart response. but And then... The, Satan came out of that the Pope's body and basically told me that he was going to come get me and so once the devil said that class was over and it seemed like everybody scrambled to get out and I remember I asked me I said you got the you got your keys you got everything and I had to hurry up and put my shoes on and we left and when we left class there was this guy who was outside selling socks and he just handed Amir two pairs of socks. But Amir didn't hear him say, you know, you got to pay for him, even though the guy just put him in his hand. So we walked away with two pairs of socks. And the guy, he was trying to hunt us down and kill us because we had walked away with uh, two pairs of socks. And Amir was like, here, we got to hide in the sand. So we hid in the sand. And when, so three guys came up to us and they, was basically trying to beat us up and um, 
Amir, he, you know, he fought the guys, even though he didn't want to fight them. Like you could see the pain on his face, but he fought them off so that we could get away. And then we went into um, a house and it was just like a one room house. Like a, so, and when we went into the house, we had turned into little kids and we went in and we were jumping on the bed. And then three little kids came in the room with us, but you could tell that they weren't children, that their face were distorted and that they were, it was Satan and the two demons that had been chasing us. And the song came into my head. Uh, I think it's caught up in a place where it says by the blood, water, spirit, 40, that he'll catch you up. And so when that song came to my head, I said, I have to, we have to turn on class and we have to preach the gospel. So while we were fighting off these demons in the room, um, and they had disguised themselves as us and they looked like us. So I had to make sure I was beating up the right people because I didn't want to accidentally beat up a mirror. But I, I went over the gospel uh, to the demons and I said, you know, uh, blood, water, spirit, 40, like the the blood of the lamb in Egypt is like, yeah, how Yahshua is uh, the, the, the lamb of Yahweh taking away the sins of the world. And then I just went through, you know, blood, water, spirit. And while I was beating them up and by the end, um, once I got done with the spirit part, I, I, they they were completely gone and I had shut the door and I looked at Amir to make sure it was him. We were still as little children, but he smiled and I knew it was him. And that's how the dream ended. But when I tell you, I woke up and I felt so tired. I felt like I was physically fighting um, for my life. And that's really how we have to think of this thing. We have to think of this gospel as we are fighting for our lives, for our eternal lives. If someone came up to you now and tried to kill you and your family, you would do everything in your power to protect your family. And that's how we should be about this gospel. We should be doing everything that we can to protect our souls and protect our eternal life from the devil because he wants us and he knows the difference between who's on his side and who's on Yahshua's side and he hates us and he despite he hates the fact that we will be taking his place in heaven and he doesn't want anybody to go there because he got kicked out so we really have to be what they call on our p's and our q's about not only studying, which that should be like a given, but how we treat each other, how we talk about each other, you know, um, how we act in public. Are we displaying the nature of Yahshua the Messiah and not to pick on each other or hate somebody? Because it's really... It's really not about that person, that personality. It's about do, are we on one accord? Do you speak the same doctrine? And even people out in the world who don't speak that same doctrine that we do, who speak of that damnable doctrine, we aren't against those people. We shouldn't hate those people. We just don't like the doctrine or we hate the doctrine that they preach. Not that those people themselves are necessarily bad, but it's what they've been influenced to believe. And we have to make sure that we're not in a place where we're influenced to believe that we're more special than anybody in this world. Um, and we can just treat people however we you know, whatever makes us feel good, we can treat them however we see or deem them to be treated. Um, there was an interview that I watched. It was, their name was Ed and something, hand, hand mark or hand maker, hand over, I don't know. Um, 
but Will Williams did the interview and they were down in, I think it was Alabama. And they were like the last two people who took care of Dr. Gross before he died. And Dr. Kinley told them, they were a white couple. And Dr. Kinley told them that people are going to hate you because you're white. You know, because back in the day, IDMR was, you know, had a lot of black people. So they were in Alabama, in the South, a white couple, and they were hated by, you know, their own brethren. And I remember Ed, he said that, um, he said, don't despise anyone. And that Dr. Finley told him that Yahweh is the most ignorant and the most intelligent. So don't despise anyone because you think that they don't know something or you despise them because they know a lot and you don't know as much as them. Every Everything is Yahweh. And if you despise something, you're despising him. And if that's what he wills to be, if he wills to be ignorance in a person that's what he's going to be if he wills to be intelligence in a person that's what he wills to be so i guess what i'm saying and then i'll get down is that we have to um examine ourselves constantly consistently i know i still make mistakes um i'm not saying that i'm anybody special and i'm sure people know that but we're going to make our mistakes, but we need to catch them and remind ourselves that, you know, this isn't proper behavior and that we need to display ourselves in a way where it's inviting for people to want to come and learn of Yahweh. Because that's really all we're trying to do is we're trying to go home and we're trying to preach to the last soul and go home and we don't want to do anything um physical to um not welcome somebody into the body of Yahshua the Messiah that's really what it's about not just inviting them to class but you want to invite somebody into the body of Yahshua the Messiah and I'm not saying we're the ones that put them in the body but how can they hear without a preacher you know so if they have to hear this gospel through somebody um and I know we always say that Dr. Kinley said, make me prove it to your satisfaction. But it's really Yahshua who has to prove himself to you. And if you really want to learn and to find something out about Yahshua as he really is and actually exists, you ask him to prove it to you. And if you need to write your questions down in your notebook and just do this as a test, write your questions down don't ask anybody don't share it with anybody and i'll guarantee you that yashua will answer your questions because that's what he does he is a revealer of secrets and so we just have to you know like i said make sure we are proper and correct and righteous in yashua the messiah and not doing anything that just like with the physical father, you don't want to do anything to make your father upset. You know, you don't want to do anything to really to make your parents look bad or to disrespect them. And that's what happens when we go out here and we act a fool. And then we say that, you know, you need to come to class is you are really disrespecting Yahweh when you act a fool, but then you say that you're a part of this gospel. And I think even Dr. Kinley said in the tape, but if you're out here acting a fool, don't even tell them that you're a part of this class because that's not going to do anything to help them bring them in. So I, you know, there's always a reason for everything. I don't know why he wanted me to go down this way, but that's just what's been on my heart and mind. And uh, with those few words, I'll say hallelujah. I'll uh, praise goes to Yahshua Messiah always. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Um, I will be your next speaker for this evening. Um, I was um, just a little silent before I go into a uh, uh, lecture. Um, Mariah woke up in the middle of the night. We both did. It was about 2, 3 a.m. And uh, she told me what happened. And then hearing um, what came off the floor, it, the things that were said off the floor, you know, being a witness to it, it was a confirmation um, that the speakers had gone through and talking about uh, Pope and uh, and Satan. And I also talked about idolatry. And um, so it, it was it was good. But um what came to my heart and mind uh, and what she was going through is that the power of the gospel, which is the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua, according to the scriptures, that being done by the Holy Spirit in preaching or teaching his gospel cast out or liberates us from that power of darkness, uh, Satan and his host. And um, the scriptures that we we come to learn, which are his witnesses, the law and the prophets, uh, we can get that. Isaiah 8 and 20. If there are any readers who are moved, uh, anybody, if anybody's moved to read, that would be helped. Oh, or I can get it myself. This is Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So now the law and the testimony or the law and the prophets are the witnesses. And what the law and the prophets uh what they do is they foretell Yahshua, the Messiah, about his birth, about his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Fact of the matter, Yahshua, the Messiah, during the days of his flesh, spoke about self-same gospel in which we preach. Um, get for me Luke 18, 31 to 34. All right. Well, um, um, what was it? Luke eighteen thirty four? You said Luke eighteen thirty one to thirty four. Oh, I'm sorry. Luke eighteen thirty one to thirty four. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning now the look, son. Now look, I'm gonna be interrupting. He said sure. all things. That are written by the prophets, read. By the prof uh, prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Now they shall be accomplished. Now Ma Matthew uh, 3.13, Matthew 5.17, Luke 24.44. Uh, you can write, you can do that for homework, but those are accounts um, where Yahweh Elohim manifested in the physical body in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah said that he came to fulfill which was written in the law and in the prophets and one of the definitions of fulfill is accomplished so I wanted to bring that out that he was accomplishing what had been written afore his birth or coming down in a physical um, uh, body as Yahshua which is, which means Yahweh is salvation. All right, read on. 32, for he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spit it on. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. And I'm sorry, in the third day, he shall rise again. So Yahshua, the Messiah, uh, you know what? Go ahead. 
continue. Read the next verse. Sure. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. Now look, Yahshua preached his self same gospel, which is his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And none of the 12 disciples knew it. No one did know it. It wasn't revealed until the day of Pentecost, which a change took place. That is, the veil was removed in their understanding being illuminated or quickened by the Holy Spirit. John 14, 24, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, John 14, 26, the Messiah told him, told them that the Holy Spirit who will come in his name, that he will teach them all things and bring all things back to their remembrance. And that's exactly what occurred on the day of Pentecost. The, that Yahshua the Messiah brought back to the things, the many things that he has spoken unto them that they did not understand. So now, in doing in in doing so, in Yahshua preaching his gospel, which is the salvation of our souls, it's by the preaching of the gospel that this creation will end. In other words, we're preaching the creation out. Get over there in Matthew 24 and 14. Now, we have a topic coming up. Uh, and that topic is, what is the meaning of eschatology uh, in April, which is coming up very soon. Now, here, Yahshua the Messiah is going to tell you what has to be fulfilled or what is going to occur beforehand before he takes this creation out. These are necessary things that must happen. Uh, read uh, Matthew. Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. And now, then he said shall... this, now he said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then what? Shall the end come. Then shall the end come. Now, just to clean that up a little bit on what the end uh, he's referring to, the end is not talking about the end of this planet, per se. And that's what the world ignorant believes. You see, you have your modern day power of Babel. When you read back over there in Genesis after the flood of uh, uh, of that uh, or the diluvian, which means flood, it was a tower built, you see, um, to escape well, what they thought their doom if Yahweh has uh, reneged, if I can say, or held back his covenant or his promise that he wouldn't flood the earth by water. And what Yahweh did there as a result of their ignorance, you see, in their wickedness, he confused their language, thus called Babel. Now, you have to see the same reflect down here in this present day and age. And you see it with man trying to build rockets, not just any old kind of rockets, but rockets that can come back down to the planet and be refueled so that they can go off to another uh, 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 to another planet to escape uh, what they already know, this doomed airplane, because they know the corruption. They know the things that we don't know, you see. So you got to see that principle reflected. But when Yahshua the Messiah refers to the end, he's not talking about the planet. He's talking about this whole creation, the universe in totality. Get from me Second Peter 3 and 10. All right. Um, this is um Second Peter two and three. ten. Three and ten. Oh, I'm sorry. Second Peter three and ten. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night. Meaning that which... folks is going to be ignorant. They're not going to catch it. He's going to come in a thief of the night. You see, as a thief in the night. Read. 
in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Now, it's going to melt with fervent heat. We're talking about spirit. Yahweh is what? A consuming fire. Then he say, uh, we live, move, and have our being in him. You realize we are within that consuming fire? You see? And Yahweh is going to, is, is going to burn up this creation. Or in other words, what? we have here is materialization through a process of transmutation of spirit into physical matter. Gaseous, liquid, or solid. And all that Yahweh is doing is taking off that shape or taking off that manifested uh, 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 material. Everything is going back to spirit. Now here's the now here's the kicker. You're either gonna be one with it, or you're gonna be consumed by it. What do I mean when I say that? Go over there and Acts the second chapter. I believe it is Acts. Yes, two, one, and jump down to four. Now this was after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, tarried on earth for forty days, ascended into heaven. For, uh, 10 days later, which is 50, uh, being Pentecost, he poured out his Holy Spirit to 120 men in the up in the upper room where they received power on high. Now, we want to read what happened to these men or what occurred. Go ahead. All right. This is Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Like as of it's what? Wait a minute. Fire. Like as of what? As of fire. Yahweh is, what is he? He is a what? Consuming uh, fire. He's a consuming fire. So you see there? They're receiving cloven tongues as a fire, that is, having the Holy Spirit within them. So when Yahweh speaks this thing out, fire can't consume fire. We know that, folks. That's common sense. But you, and, but you being naked, you see, before Yahweh, you're going to be consumed by that fire. You see? And we've seen this principle with Nadab and Abihu. When they went into the holy place, and what did they offer up? They offered up strange incense before Yahweh, and they had to be drug out. They were consumed, you see. So we want to be clothed upon. We, And then I know I'm jumping ahead, and I'm going to go back and get into the witnesses of the gospel, you see. But the simple point that I'm making is what we are doing now, the effect of this gospel the ending result, what it is bringing, is the end of this creation. So now, finish where you are, and then I want you to go over. Uh, we're going to begin with 1 Corinthians 15, and then we're going to go over and get John 5 and 39. And after that, we'll pick up a few witnesses of his gospel and how it was show, showing forth Yahshua the Messiah. That's what we preach. We don't preach ourselves. We don't get up on the floor to 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 uh, 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 talk about ourselves. You see, we talk in witness to the things that Yahshua the Messiah has shown us. All right, uh, read on. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right, that's good there. So now that's the ending. That's, oh man, <laughs> that, well, okay. Go over and get 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Let's get moving. I don't have a lot of time. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, 
if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that the Messiah died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. All right. That's good enough. So now Paul, in which he is delivering a epistle to the brethren in Corinth, is declaring unto them what the gospel is, what he first received that he had delivered unto them, which is, again, the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua, according to the scriptures. Now let's go over and get in uh, uh, John 5 and 39 and see what Yahshua the Messiah uh, uh, said about the, the self-same scriptures that Paul here is referring to. Uh, John 5, 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are... Now here, he's the, so now here he's talking to the scribes and Pharisees, and this is before the cross, what Paul had delivered unto them in Corinth was after the cross. So now here, Joshua the Messiah is saying, ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Read on. You think you have eternal life, but and they are they which testify of me. So now he's saying the scriptures testify unto him. I mentioned that in the beginning. All right. Uh, read on. 40. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not an honor, not from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of Yahweh in you. Read. I am come in my father's name. And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Read. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from Yahweh only? Read. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Even Moses, but, in whom ye trust. Read. For had, I'm sorry. <laughs> If I had you believed Moses, you now would look, have believed. He said, for had you believed Moses, read on. He would have believed me. You for would have wrote, believed me. Yahshua, read. But he wrote of me. Now Moses wrote of him. Now, it has been revealed that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Genesis to Deuteronomy. That's the law. Joshua to Malachi, that's the prophets. Those 39 books constitute a volume. Joshua the Messiah said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. We just explained how he was preaching his own death, burial, resurrection, which at the time the disciples did not know until the day of Pentecost when he poured his Holy Spirit out and it was revealed unto them the things that he had done and the things that he had spoken of. So now in going back unto Moses, picking it up, showing how the principles of death, burial, and resurrection was manifested back there in uh, uh, during the days of Moses. And not just that only, but get 1 John 5 and 7. But you have witnesses in the earth plane, which reflect of that, which is the uh, blood, the water, and the spirit. So let's pick up that, and then we're going to go ahead and go back uh, and then pick up some principles. All right, this is First uh, John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. All right, these three agree in one. So it's the death, burial, resurrection, according to the scriptures, witnessed by the blood, water, and spirit. I'm purposely taking my time. I know what I'm doing. So now let's go ahead and let's go back. And where we're going to begin, I want you to go ahead and begin at Moses.
We're going to start with Moses. And the reason why we began at Moses, yes, we know Moses wrote the first five books. You can start in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But where we want to begin is with the man who first received the name of Yahweh, which was Moses. Now, when you go back and you read Exodus, the first chapter, you read how Israel came down into Egypt, 70 souls, and the Pharaoh at that time and Joseph and all his brethren died. And there rose up a new Pharaoh over the land of Egypt. And he saw how there was more Hebrews than there were Egyptians. So he consulted with his people and thought it was wise to set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And what he said was least of their enemies or at least they would raise up and join their enemies and overtake them. Now, you have here Ram, uh, manifest, uh, Pharaoh manifested here, Ramses II, that beast man of sin, showing his tactic. Now, when they oppressed the uh, Egyptians, I mean the uh, Hebrews, it read how the Hebrews multiplied and grew. So then what he did was he uh, uh, sent for the midwives, Shippora and Pua, to kill the male children when they did their service as a midwife, but them fearing Elohim more than Pharaoh did not as Pharaoh commanded. And what that resulted was another backfire. And because of that Yahweh of what they, uh, of their fear of Yahweh, he blessed them. So what he did was he sent out a death decree to kill all the male children. So you see your principle of six, six, six. Now, I didn't mention this, but uh, there are two mysteries in operation here, the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of iniquity. So now here in this death decree, Moses is born during this time. All right. Now you have the death. And I, you know what? Go ahead. And I want you, uh, I wanted to get that. And I want you to start in Exodus, the second chapter. Okay, do you want me to start Exodus 2 and 1? You know what? Before you do that, I want you to get, because uh, I want to show the blood, water, spirit, 40, and then the death, burial, resurrection. So now in the blood in this, get Exodus 1, uh, let's see, 16, and then um, jump down to 22. All right, Exodus 1 and 16. And he said, when ye do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then shall, I mean, then she shall, then she shall live. And then you want to go down to 22. Right. Because that right. was what she told Shapura and Pua. But they feared. Elohim more than Pharaoh, you see. So in the result of that, and Pharaoh said, why have you done this? What he did was he declared a decree to kill the male children. Read on. 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people saying, every son, every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive. So now that principle was it, what is manifested there is the principle of a death again death decree and then that blood of the land the uh, male babies being shed now go on and continue in exodus the second chapter now yashua mm -hmm. the messiah had fulfilled remember jot and tittle he said he came to fulfill yashua the messiah born in a death decree you see and sent down into egypt to escape that uh, uh, um, that the killing of the male babies uh, during uh, Herod, uh, the king's reign, you see. So now here is being instituted. Yahshua is fulfilling. So you got your principle of blood there. All right. Uh, read on in Exodus, the second, two and one. Exodus two and one. And mm -hmm. there went a man of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. 
And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she said, she hid him three months. And when she, and when she could not no, no long not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bull uh what is it bull rushes, and dabbed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to what, what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to watch herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when so now she look, saw the... So now you have the boy being buried in that ark, placed by that river, a principle of what? Burial and water. So here comes the daughter of Pharaoh, all right, read on where you are. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' ch children. So you, then, see, so you see he was resurrected out of that ark. All right, read on. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman that she might nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. Pause. So now where is your spirit principle? He was resurrected from the ark. Well, get over from me in Acts 7 and 22. All right, this is um, Acts 7 and 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was now mighty. wisdom. We know is, now listen, wisdom is a principle of spirit. And Moses and so Moses was learned in all the wisdom, read on of the Egyptians, and was mm -hmm. mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full, and when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Pause. There go your 40 principles. Remember, blood of the death of the babies, male babies, water of that uh, him being laid in the river's brink. And then you got the spirit learning the wisdom. And then 40, he goes out to see his Hebrew brother. That's a change. All right. You got the death of the babies, the burial of him in the ark, the resurrection out of the ark, ascending into the household of the daughter of Pharaoh. Let's not forget these things, all right? So now, I want you to go ahead. Um, I want you to get Acts 7. Well, I want you to go ahead and, and uh, go back to Exodus 2 and uh, pick up where you left off, 2 and 11. Then once you get Exodus 2 and 11, I want you to go to Acts 7 and 27. All right, this is uh, Exodus, picking up again at 11. And it, it's uh, 2 and 11. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he, he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. So now there, so now he slew the Egyptian, meaning he killed him. So you know there had to be a show of what? Blood. All right. So there's your death. There's your blood principle. Read on. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong. Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? 
intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And so Moses no, no, feared. Mm -hmm. go, go, keep reading. And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Mm -hmm. Read on. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And so he now after, sat. So hold on. So now, after he killed that Egyptian, which is that blood being shed, he buried him in the sand. Next day, it was known what happens until uh, uh, um, um, now this thing is known. What does Moses do? He flees or he resurrects up out of Egypt. Again, showing the death, burial, resurrection. Now we're about to get into the water principle because he flees out of Egypt. And where does he come unto? Pick up from where you were. Okay. And he sat down by a well. Not a priest of now Midian. He said, now he okay. sat down by a, a well. You see a well what? A well, of, of course, water. So there's you picking up your water. All right. Read on. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to a trough to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto them, and he said unto his daughters, and where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he might eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zippor, his daughter, and she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom. For he oh, said, I have... So now, after what occurred in the at the well, you got to have your uh, spirit principle now. You can't forget it. Where is that? Well, you have Jephthah, Hurel, who was what? The high priest, you see, or the priest of Midian. And then he ended up marrying his daughter which is a marriage or a covenant, a symbol, a, which is symbolic or a symbol of spirit. All right. So now go over and get, uh, uh, cause you got to pick up your 40. Now go over and get acts seven and 30. So why are you getting this? Go, you know, go ahead, go ahead. All right. This is, um, Acts seven and verse 30. Mm -hmm. And when 40 years, Ah, there you go. 40 years. Read. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. There appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of Yahweh and a flame of fire in a bush. All right. Pause. So now there you go. You have the death of the e Egyptian burying in the sand. Moses resurrecting the next day, you see, and ascending into what? And sending into the uh, uh, household or, or Jethro or Urel. So then you got to see the blood of that Egyptian, the water at the well, and then the spirit, you see, marrying the, the uh, high priest or the priest's daughter, which is symbolic of spirit. A process of 40 years go by. So you have 40 in Egypt, 40 in the wilderness. That's 80. We know that eight is a principle of what? A new beginning. So you pick up in Exodus, the third chapter, Yahweh reveals himself unto Moses. He calls him by name, Moses, Moses. Moses says, here am I. He said, draw not nigh hither, take off the shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moses had to bear his soul before Yahweh. That ground was allegorical to the a uh, holy place within the greater and more perfect tabernacle called uh, uh, or called the universe. It was also allegorical to where the ta uh, tabernacle was to later be built after the vision that Yahweh showed Moses and had him to uh, make exactly like it, how he saw it in the mount. So now he tells him he's the Elohim of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. He gets himself acquainted with Moses. He tells him that he wanted him to go down into the land of Egypt. Now, look, 
Moses asked an intelligent question. What what name shall I, I, I give them? You see, he reveals unto Moses his name, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, the Elohim of Jacob. I'm just breaking this to exabyte time. But before that, he gave his declaration, which is Ea, Asher, Ea, which means I will be what I will to be. So now he gives Moses his name. Now, ain't nothing, it's not going to be no good if you, you tell, if you give a claim or you give something and, ha and not have any witnesses to back it up. So now Yahweh gives him his name. He showed him a vision, first of all. Then revealed to him, gave him his declaration and his name, and then he's going to give him witnesses. Now, we got to see those witnesses being manifested of that blood, water, spirit. So I want you to go ahead and get Exodus 12 and 33. Because this is the first sign. That Yah, uh, that Moses is going to deliver unto the children of Israel that they might believe that Yahweh had that Yahweh, which is his name, who is their Elohim of Israel, has sent Moses to deliver them. Read. Exodus 12 and 33. Mm -hmm. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we no, no, I'm sorry. My bad. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I, I, I need to say uh, uh, 12. Get uh, Exodus 4, where he had to, um, uh, uh, get Exodus 4 and 12. Exodus 4 and 12. Read. 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 Exodus 4 and 12. I'm looking forward. I'm sorry. Here, get uh, is uh, let's see, Exodus four. Where is that? Exodus four and nine. Okay, this is Exodus four and nine, and it shall come to pass if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. All right. And, get, the next, uh, get, get the other witness of the uh, the putting his hand into his bosom and then taking it out, which is a principle of, well, go ahead and get it. Uh, Exodus 21. 4 and start it. Yes. Oh, okay, go ahead. Is it 21 or... No, Exodus 4 and 6. 4 and 6, okay, I'm sorry. All right, this is Exodus 4 and 6. And Yahweh said, furthermore unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, it behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand unto his into his bosom, and again and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So now he he's, he putting his hand in his bosom, taking out his leprous. That's a death. He puts his hand back into his bosom. That's a burial. Plucks it out. Is resurrected as what his other flesh. So now. Um, I have four minutes. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time. So I just want to get a few uh, a, a few more principles. Give for me where and uh, now go. Just I got to just hop over to it. Get Exodus 12 and 33 for me where they put that blood on the door. This is the last plague that Yahweh gave Israel. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Gave uh, Yahweh gave into the land of Egypt, but prepared Israel, which was taking out of a lamb. You see that they had to heal and they had to put the blood of that lamb on the two side posts, on the upper door post, dipped from a basin. You see, it had to be roast with fire, eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Now, what that was testifying unto was Yahshua the Messiah. It was prophesied there in Isaiah uh, 50, uh, 52 and 53, talking about that lamb and that sacrifice. 
Yahshua the Messiah comes on the scene, comes to John, who uh, he uh, tells John, or uh, him not having sin, going unto John, John saying he need to be baptized of him, but Yahshua forbade him, telling him that thus, or suffer to be so now, for, to be so now, for he had to, what, fulfill all righteousness. Next day, John sees him. John declares Yahshua as the Lamb of Yahweh to take on the sins of the world. Now, that lamb back here, which was innocent, uh, uh, and you've seen it manifested in the wilderness, took on for the guilty. So now here's an innocent sacrificing uh, sacrifice dying for the liberation of Israel here that we're about to read in Exodus 12, 33, out of Egypt. Now, this blood that was put on the inside of their door was a token for that death angel to see and will pass over that house, thus it being called the Passover, passing them over from what? From death, you see. And that's the reality now is, I'm now I'm jumping because I don't have a lot of time, is Yahshua the Messiah's Holy Spirit in us, uh, by through the preaching of the gospel and re-receiving of him, passes us over from death unto life, all right? Translating us into the kingdom. Um, now, but go ahead and I'm going to get this last witness. So get Exodus 12, 33, then Exodus 14, 16, and then Exodus 14 and 24, and then uh, Acts 7 and 36. And get them quick. All right, 14, uh, 12, 33, and Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, we be all dead men. Now, Is that Exodus uh, no, I'm so, Exodus twelve thirty three with the blood. That that's Exodus twelve thirty three. Uh, do you want? I'm sorry. What, uh, I, I wrote down the wrong. The wrong. You want uh, me to just go to scripture? Where they put go the back blood to, on. No, go back to Exodus twelve. Seven, maybe. Up. No, no. Go back to Exodus twelve and thirteen. All right. This is Exodus. Land. I don't have a holy name in front of me. Um, I don't have a holy name in front of me. Do you want me to just read it? Just King get James? where it talks about the blood. Uh, okay, yeah, Exodus get, get 12 and 13. James. And the blood shall be, and the blood should be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. All right, so there's your blood principle. Now go over and get Exodus 14 and 24. All right, this is Exodus 14. I mean 16, my bad. Exodus 14, 16, I apologize. Okay, 16. But uh -huh. lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground th through the midst of the sea. All right, so there's your water principle, them going through the sea after leaving out of Egypt. Now get 24. All right, this is uh, verse 20, uh, 24. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, Yahweh looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and, and troubled the host of the Egyptians. All right, so there's your spirit principle, which led them, that cloud led them on through. Now get lastly, Acts 7 and 36. All right, this is Acts 7 and 36. Acts 7 and 36. Um, and he, he brought them out after that. He had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. All right. So there you go. Your blood, your water, and your spirit in 40. That death was the lamb. Uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, you don't have to get it. It talks about being buried in a cloud in the sea. And then they resurrected into the wilderness, you see. So my time is up. It's completed. But I just wanted to take these times to show the, the very fundamental principles that we have learned in this school that have built up our faith and seeing the repetition of Yahweh, you see, in the preaching of his gospel. So um, if you got anything from it, all praise, honor, glory goes unto Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. And now for our third speaker for this Evening it will be a pleasure to call on Dr. Gabrielle Mays. Dr. Mays. Uh, good evening, um, everyone. I thoroughly um, enjoyed the remarks of the first two vessels. Um, I like to give uh, 
Yash Messiah, all the praise and um, ask that he speaks through me. Um, well, first I would just, um, you know, I, I was just before class, I was speaking to two of the brethren about some of my trials and tests I've been through. And, um, you know, it's it's hard going through trials, but with each trial, you're made stronger because um, let's get the scripture with the armor of Yahshua Messiah. He, he is our shield armor. And he protects us from the fiery darts of the adversary. And it's a necessity to go through the trials that we're going through. Um, I know for me, it, I may not like the trial <laughs> that I'm going through, but I know that the outcome is for my betterment because it's building up my confidence in Yahshua, my trust in him and my faith in him. And to know that, you know, whatever I'm going through, he hears me and he does hear my cry. So I've been getting, um, like many other brethren in class, um, and there is a difference between men and brethren because not everyone's filled with the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah. Um, they just, they may say they have him, but they they don't. <laughs> a lot of people lie um, and he doesn't like that. But those that he is really in, um, I know that they also went through similar trials of, you know, having the mystery of iniquity will work through family members. The mystery of iniquity will work through neighbors, people on your job. I've been getting hit with all three of those sometime at the same time. And it's kind of like overwhelming. But Yashua the Messiah um, is working with me on temperance. So after that scripture, can I have temperance read uh, from the Merriam-Webster on temperance? But we can get that scripture first if you found it. And I won't be too long to share um, just a testimony because... As it stated, we should all have a reasonable testimony about what Yashua Messiah is continually doing for us. And like I said, I'm speaking from the heart off the cuff, you know, just speaking from the heart. So um, let's continue, please. Okay, um, Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh mm -hmm. that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Um. But you want the shield, so maybe I'll go over to um, um but if you find um it. I'll start and then I'll jump down to um okay. I'll go over to um um I'll go down to fourteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um there's uh stand therefore having your learners girt about about what truth having mm -hmm. on the breastplate of righteousness mm -hmm. and your feet should, uh, should with the preparations of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield mm -hmm. of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked yes and, and those... take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of Yahweh right and the word of Yahweh and the only way that you know, could be done as, you know, having him in you, in your soul, and through his death, burial, and resurrection, and outpouring of the, the Holy Spirit, him being in you, that's how you're able to stand the wilds. It's not you, the soul, it's him in the soul doing that. And, um, you know, as we see here on the tabernacle chart, you know, he is the only sacrifice. And when Yahshua the Messiah shows you the witnesses, um, that he is the only one and how the scriptures point to him, you know, the tabernacle doesn't even, you know, look the same because you know that he's, you know, the only sacrifice, the atonement that, you know, that he made for us and he washes and cleanses the soul. You won't, you won't be washed by damnable, uh, demonic, uh, doctrine. You know, you know that he's the only one that can truly cleanse the soul. You know, he is the door. He is our light of understanding. You will not go to another for understanding because you know that it's him. Whether him preaching in a vessel or out of a vessel, you are able to recognize his voice and know he's the only one that can give you an understanding. You know, he is your bread. You know, he's the one that's feeding you. You're not going outside of yourself looking to be fed spiritually. He's the one. He's your only mediator. He's the only mediator. Yashua Messiah 
You will not mediate with anyone else. He's your only mediator. <laughs> he is highly upset with souls intercoursing with other souls. That's already in the textbook with spiritual homosexuality. Um, he doesn't like that. You know, he's the only mediator. He's your only go-to for everything. And of course he rent this, you know, the sixth step, the veil of his flesh that's been rent. He's your king and he sits, you know, he sits on your throne and um, you're able to see him, the truly the high priest operating in your soul. And he shows you and teaches you and he makes you aware that he is there. So I want to, for you to hold um, in the textbook, the natural man. Um, I do want to get that because that's one of my favorites too with the natural man. But I'm going to share the screen and if someone wants to um, read this, they can. This is from a transcript of the discussion at St. Louis Abysmal. It's kind of picking up from the first and second vessel, um, basically the reality of the teaching in you. And um, this is on page eight. Um, if anyone wants to read with Dr. Kelly, he's going over certain things with the uh, vessels there. And in this section, which is really striking, he goes into secret faults and how People are, you know, people can be very sneaky and they think that your fault is not exposed. But <laughs> when Yahshua Messiah makes you aware of his presence and, you know, there's nothing hid in the body of Yahshua Messiah. There's no hiding. You can't hide from him. <laughs> he knows you. He made you. He's listening to your thoughts. He knows why you're doing something. Um, he knows he knows everything. So we can't hide anything. So I just wanted that kind of read with this one. And then we'll jump down to page 21 where he's going into the glorified body um, because that's what we're looking for. And all of the vexation that we go through here on earth and will continue to go through is, is worth it because what we have to look forward to, which I really enjoyed yesterday's lecture that Yashim Messiah was, you know, really telling us through the vessels, look to him. And, you know, we don't glory any flesh, look to him and get your house in order and ready. Meaning, repent. If you are doing something like we all have, no one's perfect in the flesh, repent. Yahshua, help me. You know, I don't want to be hateful. Help me. You know, whatever it is, cry out. Don't sit there and just be defiled and let those satanic spirits devour you whole. Cry out. You know, you don't want to be a woman abused or a man abused. You're just taking the abuse. Cry out. Yahshua, help. You know, get this satanic spirit off me. Cry out. You know, you don't want to just sit there and hold that stuff in. Just cry out. So that's what we're told to do. He hears our cries. And when we cry out to him, to help us with anything. Um, I cried out to him for a boss and I'm seeing Yahweh's wrath come down on him. I mean, he is smiting my boss and it's something to watch. When you cry out to Yahshua, I, I didn't know he would, you know, strike him that, you know, that quick, but he, he struck him because he was messing with his son. And, you know, he's messing, you know, it, it's, it's, when you, when you cry out to, to him, he, he hears you and he will take care of whatever satanic spirit is bothering you, whether they're in a body or out of a body. So um, if you can, I'll just go back to the transcript just to read this part. And then we'll go down to 21. Um, where it says, Dr. Kelly, I have it on the screen. Where if okay. You I have the transcript. Um, this is discussion at St. Louis Abysmal, um, lecture given by Dr. Kinley, February 13th, 1971. Yes. And it says, Dr. Kinley, yes, it's wonderful, really wonderful. It's really wonderful. But you see, uh, uh, let me see if I can say this in a way that that it can be understood. I'm talking about the general conception of it. Now, is this. Now, here's what it is. We're down here today, tomorrow. Maybe you'll be somewhere else. Maybe the next day, you'll be back in Los Angeles. You'll be back in the Detroit. 
and whatnot. And day to day, and people have secret things that's mm -hmm. hidden within them. Mm -hmm. That's why David said, cleanse thou me, O Yahweh, of secret faults. Now you now, see how David cried out to Yahweh to cleanse him? He didn't cry out to another another uh, person. He didn't cry out to that person, thou cleanse me, or this person cleanse me. He said, Yahweh, you cleanse me. That's what we're supposed to do. If there's anything in us that Yahshua is not happy with, Yahshua, cleanse me of my seed, cleanse me. That's what the whole point is going to Yahshua. You know, not looking outward, you know, talking about anybody is just a deflection on what the wickedness is in you. It's just, a, it's just you showing your own self up at that point because everybody fell, fall short, you know. But the point is, is going to Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, um, continue on, please. Now, this is going to everybody, individual mm -hmm. and presumptuous sins. Mm -hmm. Now then, we don't want you to know about this. Hi. I know... I know I'm wrong, but we don't want, I'm using uh, her collectively. We mm -hmm. don't want you to know about this. Now mm -hmm. she's collective. I mm -hmm. just want, I just won't say nothing about it. I right. keep that to myself. It's mm -hmm. a secret. And mm -hmm. you think, and don't nobody know nothing, uh, nothing about it, but you, but you're wrong. You're just you're wrong. wrong. You're just wrong. <laughs> it's exposed this is this teaching exposes um what's in you it exposes this is and but it's to help cleanse you this is the gospel that uh this gospel can deliver and it converts your soul and it, it's the true gospel unadulterated truth of Yahweh Elohim himself preaching he is power he has the power and is power to convert your soul and he is truth and, uh, you know, with him clean, cleaning us up of things that we cry out, he will do it. I mean, he he hears us and that's what he's pleased with, with us going to him. But of course, as the first speaker said, you know, and the second speaker, you know, also um, carried on the principle too, when you look outside yourself and if that's all you're doing, you're missing the boat here. You're missing the boat. Okay. Continue on, please. He said, um, okay, and uh, okay, he said collectively. Okay, and you're you're just as wrong as you can be. To mm -hmm. tell you the truth, everybody knows something about it but you. Right. Because I just got through telling you a you a while ago that they don't know what's in the Bible. They're mm -hmm. reading you. Now right. you're reading the Bible. And you think that the other fella don't know nothing about it, mm -hmm. don't know nothing about it, and everybody knows something about it but you. You mm -hmm. think you're covered up and you're hid. I'm talking about Yahweh knowing the heart and the mind. Now, Yahweh, Yahweh knows the heart and the mind of a soul. I don't know where people go on thinking that they can hide from him. He knows your heart and mind. He knows if a soul believes this gospel and this teaching and if they don't. He knows if they're crying out to him and if they're going outside themselves, intercoursing with whether it be other family members, whether it be with neighbors, your friends, people on your job. He knows if you're going outside of him instead of talking to him. He knows the heart and mind. He knows if you really believe the words that he is speaking and preaching from to you and your heart and mind and off these uh and off the floor or whether you just take it for not. And that's that's you know that should really straighten up a soul but sometimes you know he has to take a more um sterner approach with stubborn souls. Okay? Uh continue. On. Said, now, uh, now Yahweh knows now Yahweh knows his own and mm -hmm. the devil knows his. Yes indeed. Yahweh knows that he him knows today. whom he put his spirit in. Not somebody lying, saying that they have the Holy Spirit and they know they don't. You cannot lie on Yahshua Messiah. He knows his own and the devil knows his. Um, and then we'll drop down to 21 because I think it's so beautiful about the glorified body because he kind of goes into that. Um, I mean, that's that's something that, you know, I always ask Yahshua to, you know, keep me 
and you know which he does <laughs> but um I, I just this gospel to me is so precious because I've had experiences with satanic spirits out of a body and in people and um it's there's too many down here to just you know take eternal life as nothing you know you just don't want to throw away eternal life and just get caught up in the cares of the devil and the natural things of this earth plane and um you know i i just always i take eternal life seriously because it's i i know i have to come out this body at some point and i want to make sure that i'm right before yashima Messiah, not before anyone else i'm not here to uh, you know, showboat or do anything. I want to make sure my soul is right before him. So I always ask him to keep his ever presence on my mind. And, you know, I walk uh, cir circumspect before him continually. And he does, he, he keeps me. So let's go on to page 21. Um, let's see. Let's talk. Oh, uh, you can start right here with Dr. Kenley. Um, we'll just get a little bit of this going into the mortal body because that's what I'm looking forward to, <laughs> to, as it was said, you know, uh, yesterday, um, I, I'm just looking forward to going into the next age and not have to worry about a devil. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm looking forward to not having to be bothered with no satanic spirits in a body or out of a body ever again. <laughs> and when he wraps up this earth plane, I'll be happy. <laughs> Okay, so let's um continue with this one. I have it hi highlighted here, page 21. Let me read it here. Okay, okay. Let me see. Yes, I, okay. He said, yes, I tell you what it is. It's great. It's mm -hmm. a great big mystery. Mm -hmm. Um, Just one, uh, just. It's okay. That's okay. Yeah, this is um a paper that I encourage everyone if they have the time to read and the um the time to kind of go over. Okay. Yes, I tell you. Oh, your turn. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Kelly, yes. Okay, let me, let me turn this up. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Dr. Kelly, yes, I'll tell you what it is. I can um I do you do you have to apologize. I, I, yeah, I I I I I can read it and okay. maybe a little chat because I'm reading off my phone. But okay, okay. yes, I, Dr. Kenley, yes, I tell you what it is. It is a great, great big mystery all of the all the time. Now let me, in other words, that will help you in what we're talking about. And that was this that every eye shall see him. Now there's a big mistake can be a uh, big mistake, can be made, and that too. People that have eyes can see. Now, them that don't have none, they can't see. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I said, like tonight, if you can comprehend what we're talking about, then you can see. Now, here's, here's the other part of that, the thing which I'm talking about. Here's the other part of it. Mm -hmm. We have borne the image of the earth of the earthly. Mm -hmm. We shall also bear the image of the inner man. In mm -hmm. other words, an incorporeal son, and then there, I'm sorry, and then there was a, a physical son. Now we're now we've borne the image of the physical and the physical 
He has made in the likeness and the image so far as the structure is concerned, but you don't have you, you have this treasure and uh, earthen vessels, but yeah. you don't have an immortal body. Right. Now, yeah. since. Okay, that's good right there. So you can see that also in the uh, tabernacle pattern, you know, the treasure in the earthen. Uh, that's the Holy Spirit in your soul. And he is the one that's going to change and give us that glorified uh, body that we are so yearning, you know, and that we're waiting patiently on. Um, so let's get in the textbook. If you have the natural man, um, I'm trying to be, you know, I'm going to be patient because I'm calling a lot of things. So um, the natural man in the textbook, uh, Let's get that. Uh -huh. Okay, this is the natural man in volume four, page yeah. 110. The natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. First right. Corinthians 2.14. Here it is plain that by the natural man is not meant a person devoid of natural judgment reason or con uh, conscious in which sense the expression is often used among men mm -hmm. nor does it signify one who is entirely governed by the by f his fleshly appetites or mm -hmm. what the world calls a uh what is that voluptu <laughs> voluptuary mm -hmm. or um centralist right neither does it signify merely a man in the rude state of nature whose faculties have not been cultivated by um by um what is that i uh, icon what is that iconing and study and polished by an intercourse an intercourse with society the apostle um manif uh, oh boy the apostle manifestly uh takes his natural man from among such as the world holds and highest uh rep repute for their natural parts, their learning and their religion. He mm -hmm. selects him from among the philosophers of Greece right. who sought out the wisdom and from among the Jewish scribes who were instructed in the and revealed in and revealed the law of Yahweh, First Corinthians 1, 22 to 23. Mm -hmm. These are the persons whom he terms the wise. Right. The scribes, the the scribes, the disputers of this world, men to whom the gospel was a stumbling block and foolishness. The First Corinthians and people, the the theologians, the that can even be anyone who is, uh, you know, even in their own mind is puffed up in their own mind of they think they're right and they know. <laughs> okay, continue on. First Corinthians 1, 20, 20 through 23. The natural man is here evidently opposed to him that is spiritual. First Corinthians 2, 15. So the natural man is always going to be opposed to him that is spiritual. Yahshua the Messiah. It's an opposition. The carnal and the spiritual are polar opposites. You can't intermingle it. You can't integrate the two. It's just like the mystery of iniquity and the mystery of righteousness which you have um, running side by side, but they're not all jumbled up together. It's running side by side and that line is coming down through the ages and dispensations. Okay, continue on. Even as the natural body, which we do derive from Adam's opposed to the spiritual body, which mm -hmm. believers will receive from the Messiah at the revelation of Yahshua, the Messiah from heaven, 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 15, 44 through 45. Now, the spiritual man is one who has the spirit of the Messiah dwelling in him, Romans 8 and 9. Right. Not merely in the way of miraculous gifts, as right. some have imagined. From these, from, from these were peculiar to the first area of the Christian church. And even then, not common to all the uh, well, saints or well, sons, nor necessarily I'm sorry, nor in uh, separable, separably connected with salvation. First Corinthians 14, one through four. But in his saving influences of light, holiness, 
Mm -hmm. and consolation whereby the subject is made to discern the truth and excellency of spiritual things and so to believe love and delight them as his true happiness so that's and therefore our happiness is yashu messiah and us he discerns the truth and excellency of spiritual things because he's revealing it to us it's not on the natural and the physical things. We're not consumed by that. We're not of this world. We're just passing through this realm, this physical realm, but we're not of this world. You know, our mind and our heart is on spiritual things. And as it was just said, you know, we're striving, you know, for, for the glorified body that is promised to us, you know, and it's worth all the vexation down here, but our mind is elevated on Yashin Messiah and spiritual things. Okay, continue on, please. Sure. If therefore a man is called spiritual because the spirit of the Messiah dwells in him, giving him views, dispositions, and enjoyments, then so, a natural man... Messiah, he's the one that's dwelling in us. He's given us views. He's given us his disposition, his views of how he sees things according to the purpose. Our mind is harmonized with him. You know, we're not going to look look at, you know, things down here like it was just said, uh, world leaders, they're doing things according to what Yahweh has already purposed them to do because they have a role to play. We're happy to see, you know, him to show us that and to know, yeah, it's wrapping up. <laughs> but he's given us our views, our disposition and our enjoyments. They are not fleshly, it's spiritual in, in him. Okay, so let's continue on. Sure, being opposed to such must be one who is destitute of the spirit mm -hmm. and of all his sayings and mm -hmm. supernatural effects, mm -hmm. whatever may be his attach I'm sorry, and attainments in human learning and science. It is obviously upon this principle that Yahshua insists upon the necessity of the new birth in order in order to our in entering into the kingdom of heaven. John three three through five. Yeah. So there's that it's, born again. You cannot. Okay. So we have to get the fruits of the spirit if we can. And the, um, the works of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom with that satanic carnal mess <laughs> in you, all that, you know, hatred, malice and strife. That's not of Yahshua Messiah. You're not going to enter into the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's polar opposite of Yahshua. He's not that. So the kingdom that that he's in, if he's in your soul and you truly have the Holy Spirit in you, you know, as, as he said, you've been born again. He's the one who does the conversion, not the Pope, the priest, not natural family, not neighbors, not your friends. They can't convert your soul. I don't care how much they intercess for you and tell you what you need to do. They cannot convert the soul. They can't change someone. That's not, first of all, it's not their job to do. They're not the intercessor. Okay, let's continue, please. Sure. It is impossible for the natural man with a carnal mind to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Oh, because it is of his for a natural, carnal minded man, woman, child, soul, a carnal soul cannot enter into the kingdom. That should shake somebody's core. Dang, let me take a look at myself then you won't have time to talk about, you know, anyone else because you're doing an inner household check. Let me sit down somewhere. Let me check. Let, let me let me just sit here and quietly and talk to the Holy Spirit and, you know, in me. Let me let me commune with him. Then you don't have time to look outside yourself. It is impossible for the natural man with a carnal mind to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Impossible. Okay. Continue. Because of his natural fleshly mind. For they flesh. that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But right. they that are after the spirit, the right. things of the spirit. Right. Um, so I read that, um, you don't have to go into that. Um, well, yeah, I guess you do. I guess we do have to read the whole part. <laughs> It's, yep. it's the last paragraph. <laughs> I.e. carnal, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but right. they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. 
For mm-hmm. to be carnally minded, the minding of the flesh is death. Right. But right. to be spiritually minded, the minding of the spirit is life and peace. Because right. the carnal mind is enmity against Yahweh. But right. it is not subject to the law of Yahweh. Neither right. indeed can be. Right. Romans 8, 5 through 8. All right, then. Thank you for reading that, Deandra. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. So let's get um, the last scripture called with Galatians uh, 5, 19. We'll get the fruits of the spirit. And then okay. I will end on temperance. Um, okay. the word temperance. I'll end on that because um, that's just how I'm read. Okay, I have Galatians 5, uh, 19 of the Holy Name Bible. Okay, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, Mm -hmm. idolatry, witchcraft, Mm -hmm. hatred, variance, Mm -hmm. emulations, wrath, strife, Mm -hmm. seditions, and heresies, envying, murderers, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. Of, mm-hmm. of the of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, mm-hmm. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Now that right there, that would shake somebody to their bones. He said, if you're doing that, those that practice and do do that without any care in the world, you know, nothing's gonna happen to me just doing that. He just said that you cannot inherit the kingdom with that kind of mindset. You have to be converted and changed. Okay, so let's give um, fruits of the spirit. Okay, 522. But uh, Galatians 522. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, Mm -hmm. peace, Mm -hmm. long suffering, Mm -hmm. gentleness, goodness, faith, Mm -hmm. meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no penalty. That's right, because those uh, fruits have to be exercised in your soul. Yash Messiah has to make that flourish in your soul, and he does that, and and he puts you through things so that that those attributes or those fruits can be exercised. We can't just, you know, people just can't go around saying, I got this or I have that. No, no, no. He has to exercise that, and you may go through some really hard, hard trials and hard tests. But, you know, the good thing about that, like he always, you know, tells me and ch- shows me you grow and he purges more fruit in you and <clears throat> you're growing in him. And it's just wonderful. So let's get um, temperance and then I'll end on temperance. Uh, what is temperance? Um, I think I have that if you don't have it. You, you, you want the definition, right? Yeah, of temperance. OK, um, this is from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Um, temperance now. Uh, first one, moderation in action, thought, or feeling. Resistant. So it's a moderation in, in action, thought, or feeling, or a restraint. And <laughs> you can't do that on your own. It takes, that's why that's one of the fruits. You know, it takes him to restrain Um, from, thank you, I see the bell. It, it takes him to restrain in you from going off, from doing things that are unseemly or unpleasing to Yahshua. You know, it takes him. So let's continue to with the second definition. Helpful moderation and indulgence of the appetites or passions Mm -hmm. and to be moderation in or abstinence from the use of alcohol, alcoholic beverages. Yeah, it has that one. And then that's, you know, those are two of the natural, um, natural temperance. But, you know, we're talking about the fruits of the spirit of spiritual temperance and him restraining and him, you know, doing the fighting for us. And he's keeping us no matter if just like, wow, the Messiah went through so much. And Isaiah, the 53rd chapter being spit upon, beat upon and mocked. And we will go through cruel mockings as well. We'll go through we'll go through a lot but we know that yash Messiah is in us and keeping us you know we we will 
we will be smited. You know, we will go through this like they tried to, you know, they hit him, they pulled the beard, they put the crown of thorns on his head and treated him so bad. And, um, you know, and a lot of us will go through the same thing, but we have Yashin Messiah in us and we're comforted and have peace in us. And he keeps us and gives us that temperance or that restraint from wanting to do revenge or wanting to go after. Um, and then also I have two for temperance in the Senate. And uh, um, I have in here of the uh, etymology is self-control, moderate, moderate ration, restraint. Uh, to exercise moderation, to restrain oneself. Um, and I'm just thankful that, you know, he's he's working with me, like I said, and everybody else, he's working with his body day by day. He has a body down here and the outpouring of the, the Holy Spirit is still going on. He's still saving souls. And I always hope that there's someone that he'll bring into the fold out there internationally, locally, someone that's crying out that wants to be delivered from, you know, the wiles of the devil and they're crying out and he hears that. And um, I always hope for, you know, souls that he he brings out and he'll add on to the fold. And um, I'm just really appreciative and thankful of that and him keeping me like he's keeping us all every day. So with these few words, I'll say hi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, brethren, that uh, will conclude class for this evening. We'd like to thank all the speakers that came forth. Uh, 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 class was good. Before we conclude here, I, I do have a, <clears throat> excuse me, I do have a few announcements. Um, we meet publicly at the Best Western Plus Hotel at 4400 Frontage Road, Hillside, Illinois, on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. Monday, Monday and Thursdays nights on Zoom and YouTube and YouTube from 7:30 to 9:30 p.m. Twice a month on Thursdays are in person from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m., which will be announced monthly. The next in-person meeting will be on Thursday, February 19th. We would like to thank everyone for joining us in class today. Uh, there are some announcements to be held after, uh, uh, I mean, if you could stay uh, the members on Zoom after class for some uh, announcements, but um. We would take a, uh, a moments to bow our hearts and minds and uh, uh, take the last few verses of the book of Jude so that we can uh, be dismissed in doxology. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, Belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.